Hi, my name is Dave and welcome to my part 3 exploration of satellite telescopes from the late 1950s, early 1960s. I compare all satellite telescopes to this one. This is the Unitron and it is the, I think, archetype of the small satellite telescopes. Not the most common, probably the most expensive. This is the Calamar model S2 and as you can see it comes in a very nice case comparable to a nice uh, microscope case stored in there and this has got to be a very strange the configuration on this thing is quite unusual first of all the fact that it has a case is uh, pretty bizarre and interesting the mounting style on this thing, if you look at this, this is weird. Notice how the mounting is some sort of a weird conglomeration. This tightens it down with regard to altitude, I guess you'll call it altitude. This is not azimuth, this is pseudo azimuth maybe. Anyhow, that is a very, very strange and interesting telescope. This is another very unusual one. Uh, <laughs> completely bizarre in some respects. First of all, uh, the, the way it's put together is quite different and kind of bizarre. Let's see, this thing has a clip kind of a mounting so you can turn it like so follow what I'm doing you can move it like that so you got typical azimuth and altitude and this is the PIC Spectron 4.5 by 40 millimeter very interesting I don't know why they put an altitude, a way to measure the altitude here. They don't have any way to measure the azimuth. Kind of strange. Another thing that's interesting about this is this comes off like so. Presumably that's so that you could use it as a spotting scope. This is a very interesting one. This is the TASCO satellite scope. It comes in this nice uh, pseudo blue velvet box cardboard with some sort of blue velvet coating here's a set of instructions for it like so and there you have a very odd uh, strange configuration notice that the angle here is not a 90 degree so it's more like maybe 120 degrees or something like that goes on here like this okay so here you have the little mini tripod there are instructions the instructions say specifically mount that so that this this locks in like so mount that so that this is out to the right hand side and presumably you can lower it, raise it, like that. This is kind of a locking mechanism. So you could be looking through it, something like this, and then lock it down, maybe track in azimuth, something like that. <clears throat> I don't know, some of these things are simply designed to be impressive to the buyer, not necessarily very useful. This actually is a pretty good little scope. The optics are, are pretty good. And um, this configuration, this angle here, is um, never seen one of those before. Another, there's no other satellite scopes that I know that are like that. Okay, here's your typical M17 military surplus. There is uh, one difference, and that is that the optics are not present in this scope. It used to have uh, maybe a 50 millimeter, 40 millimeter objective in there of some sort. At some point, I'm not sure when, if it was done by the military or if it was done later by other people, 
At some point they decided to make a an adapter to fit a big 5 inch lens onto this. Now you have uh, what's called the Apogee and this was a very famous kind of satellite scope from the 1950s and 60s. Anyway, this is the kind of thing that you would have seen typically set up in this kind of a this kind of an arrangement, this sort of altaz, or usually, I, I think they were usually actually fixed at a fixed altitude, and the observer would watch and see if anything crossed to their their field of view. I believe that's the way they operate these things. One of the things I did with this scope when I got it was to try it on a sort of a temporary mount and then I decided it's a pretty nice little scope if you could use it in a, some sort of an alpha azimuth configuration for a, you know maybe a comet finder rich field kind of telescope so I, uh, I uh, d divided it and I pulled it apart and I put this on I made this with my south bend lathe this is a tapered interior t internal taper here which is tricky except that I have the south bend taper attachment which made it pretty darn easy made that south bend taper attachment begin to pay for itself expensive double that it is anyway you put this on here now that's it's trapped it's not really going to fall off there but I got a couple of set screws to hold it on okay now that I've got this on configured properly tighten this down a little bit it's you know gravity's going to hold it in there anyway but that's just for a little additional security so now I've got a kind of a yoke arrangement and I happen to have an old World War II military surplus this is apparently a a finder from a grenade launcher. So I mounted that on there. Because this scope has a small amount of field of view that it's a pain to try and find things. It's 20 power, just a little awkward for finding things. Let me show you how I mount this. This is a, an LTAS mount from a Unitron Model 150. It's actually about the same date as these things. It's maybe even a little older than some of these things. It's 1950s. And it's probably made before these things were configured in this way, anyhow. Alright, let's put this on here. And it's uh, pretty well balanced. It does have a little bit of friction control here. And the little finder device helps. It needs to be have that removed. Now you've got a nice little Altaz telescope, 5 inch, very fast, about f5 or so. <laughs> the optics are not great on this telescope, but by the same token for, you know, comet spotting or maybe spotting a faint uh, satellite in the sky, this would probably be just about the right kind of thing to have. This is made from an M17 with a 5 inch lens pasted on the front basically this is also made from an M17 this was uh, strictly something I threw together just for fun and what this is is uh, I had a, a broken M17 where it was cut off right about here didn't have an eyepiece and I was lucky enough to find a, uh, a special fitting that would have been sold by Jaegers back in the 1950s when they were selling these things and uh, it fits right in there and it's got a, a focusing Jaeger's eyepiece and I put uh, an 80 millimeter I just happen to have an 80 millimeter binocular objective and I put it on there just essentially glued it on there although it's not glued it's, uh, it's metal uh, anyway it really doesn't work properly because this is of course not uh, the full 80 millimeters not functioning uh, about 70 millimeters or so so it's, and this is just for fun, just for chuckles and grins, just to make something fun and interesting. I hope you've enjoyed my look at these uh, additional satellite telescopes from the late 1950s. Thank you very much for watching.